Well, I don't really believe in a New Year's resolution. I believe in developing new habits uh, that you can uh, sustain. Um, talking about sustainability, one uh, new habit that I want to develop is to, to spend more time looking at the ESG slash SRI uh, component of the investment. And that, that's something that indeed uh, generally is getting uh, bigger, so I want to spend more time on this. A second new habit maybe is to spend less time listening to central banks, but more time talk, uh, look, looking at the data. Uh, I believe that forward guidance uh, had a very strong anchor and going forward is going to be more data dependent. Uh, typically the ECB uh, told us no rate hike well beyond the end of QE. Um, the uh, BOJ had a peg of 10 year rates. I think all that is going to change uh, this, uh, this year and inflation clearly uh, will impact the speed of the exit of central banks. Well, it's hard to find any winner, really. Uh, Long-term financial stability uh, might be the, uh, the winner. Uh, the loser clearly is uh, the fixed income asset class and more specifically uh, the government bonds. Uh, I believe that uh, the ECB tapers uh, that tapering will focus primarily on government bonds and that asset class will, will suffer. A winner potentially will be volatility. Uh, the market has been convinced that central banks would exit very, very slowly. The volatility of forward short-term rates is extremely low. Uh, that starts to pick up. Uh, the environment probably will become a little bit less sanguine. Well, it depends what type of populism we're talking about, really. Uh, we can talk about economic policy. And I think uh, one country uh, where we're a bit worried about the inflation developments, for example, is Romania. Uh, there is a bit of uh, overheating there, and the uh, fiscal spending in particular uh, is probably uh, adding to those, uh, to those pressure. So that, that's one area of, uh, of concern. Um, otherwise, obviously, uh, when we talk about populism, uh, we think very quickly, um, we think about um, immigration. Uh, there has been quite significant tensions between large CE countries, uh, Poland, Czech Republic, Hungary, and the EU. Uh, you know, that doesn't keep us awake at night. We believe that eventually it's in everyone's interest uh, um, to find some solutions or not to let that uh, deteriorate the um, uh, uh, environment in the EU. But that's something we need to watch. And along with that, obviously, the developments between uh, Saudi Arabia uh, and Iran and the developments in the Middle East, because that could create another wave of immigration. QE has not created a lot of consumer price inflation uh, so far, but it has created a lot of asset price inflation, and many assets are rich. So effectively, uh, it's very hard to find uh, residual value. Um, as I said, the asset class we like the least is fixed income, and in particular, uh, government bonds. The one that we prefer is still, on a selected basis, um, equity markets, in Europe in particular, uh, we still believe there is value uh, in the equity market. Some specific sectors like financials, but also the value stocks, we believe, offer uh, some uh, opportunities. Um, so that, that's where, that is where we will focus and also on the uh, private assets. Um, that is also a, a major area of uh, focus for us. We're talking about uh, real estate, uh, loans, um, infrastructure. Uh, all those assets, uh, we believe, should continue to do well, even as central banks um, exit super easy policies. We had here at Euro Money a panel about the uh, geopolitical environment, uh, and obviously uh, we do have concern. I talked about Iran and Saudi Arabia, the Middle East. Uh, this is probably the number one concern. We could talk also about uh, North Korea, of course. We could talk about immigration. 
uh, which I mentioned already. So geopolitics is always in the uh, background. Uh, the economic level, I suppose, leverage is a big, uh, is a big issue. Uh, if you look at non-financial debt, government, corporations, uh, households, uh, globally non-financial debt as the share of GDP is at a new high. So there is that concern. We'll be looking very closely at sectors that are very leveraged, uh, uh, corporate sectors that are very leveraged and could suffer from a normalization and increase in real rates. You know, something that is starting to be discussed but will be probably more prominent next year is the length of the U.S. economic cycle. You know, if we have a positive growth in the U.S. in Q1 this year, uh, this will become the second longest uh, cycle in history. Um, and of course, there are question marks about potentially uh, looking down the road, a downturn in the U.S. People mention the curve in the U.S. that is very flat uh, and historically that has signaled a recession. We're not too worried near term. Um, in particular, real rates are still very low and we definitely don't see a recession uh, coming up in the next 12 to 18 months. We think that cycle will be long because um, it's been actually by historical standard uh, fairly, fairly moderate. Uh, but I think one year down the road, yes, the turn in the US cycle was something that probably uh, will be in many people's minds.